dude yeah. that, that's my whole that's like my whole when are you gonna do goal. that when do you think you'll do something like that how long okay let me ask you this dance you've been there were you there just one night in and out like you drove home or you stay there yeah yeah no we it was like just me and a couple of buddies we'd like go over there and then drive back the same night yeah yeah, which is a little dangerous. Struggle busting. Yeah, yeah, that's that's tough. Grimy. Yeah. Porta madre. Middle seat. Austin, I don't give a fuck if you think I'm funny or not. Okay, <laughs> California or wherever. I don't give a shit. Goddamn. Yeah. Yeah, you went up and you went in the middle seat on the way there and you came back riding shotgun. Oh, yeah. No, I was driving the car, bro. Hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the way in my back. car. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I want to give it a shot. Uh, Rob was asking me when I'm going to try that. I have no idea. Uh, would you go and like stay like a week or a couple of days and try to do a bunch of like <laughs> sets a week all right a weekend yeah how about a weekend not for shit not for free not the way my bills are set up i'm not gonna be out there <laughs> what, what if you what if you made all the connects in that weekend like would it be worth it man look here you know my wife bro <laughs> uh, she gotta make Same. sense logistically so trying to figure out when can we do a boys weekend in she, austin hey right. well i mean i do perform in There's austin yeah. right like uh couple I, hit I, spots yeah yeah like uh what were you with me at cap city no it was uh dave J yeah. and bryson um but like we do cap city and then uh we might switch it up i don't know I, we might go back to cap city but i really want to do like a whole weekend yeah in cap city there's really mm -hmm. no reason uh i gotta follow up with my wife is sure, and just be like hey are, are they gonna give us a weekend in my opinion, man, I mm -hmm. feel like I got enough following there. Yeah, for sure. To where for it's sure. like, bro, let me do five, six shows and we can make... About, Especially if Danny G opens this up, you know? much money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, like, we definitely want to get you... Uh, we've been wanting to get you on shows. Um, obviously, logistics-wise, uh, it, it makes most sense to, like, the Texas ones at first, right? Mm -hmm. Until we're able to, like, fucking... I got to step my shit up to where I'm able to be, like... And you got to fly all my boys in... And you got to have some Air Force Ones in that bitch when we land. <laughs> you know, fresh pair. Some time. hokas, you know, fresh hokas for everybody. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Yeah, man. So, just um, that's the invite right there. So, just make sure you remind me. Hey, motherfucker, you said I could pull up. Remember on the podcast? Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't forget. Yeah, I'm going to call you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I see, you got, uh, I see you got El Paso coming yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, a couple and That's far. Yeah, yeah, maybe like more like San Antonio and Dallas might be more <laughs> yeah. your speed. Yeah. Um, sure. But yeah, man. Uh, Javi, what's up, bro? When we going to roll out there and show these California boys how it's done? When, whenever, man. Uh, I, I actually uh, just had to cancel my Austin date that's coming up because I'm going to go with you to El Paso. Oh, shit. Uh, no, no, that's cool. It was to Odessa was or which one? No, was El Paso. We're oh, doing okay. El Paso 6 to, six to the 8. Did it fuck you up? Bro? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I, you know, no it, made much, it was a Thursday night, whatever. I, I like Austin. I get out there. There's a couple of rooms that I hit. Hit that that uh that I like the the audience is like me you know it, it it's it's good but I'm I'm down whenever man you know yeah I gotta figure out and remember what all connects I have out there because like I knew California comedians when they were in Cali I don't I don't yeah. even know I don't have an assessment of like okay which ones y'all what's up with that Rogan Club bro that just awesome. opened right the mothership. mothership yeah I see they're opening that up soon or, yeah, I think it's, it's open already. yeah unless, okay. I think tickets went on sale and sold out in like less than five minutes yeah wow yeah I think they were doing like uh like mics and stuff there for like the local comics before it was even really like opened up like that mm -hmm. from what I heard I don't really know really? if that's uh yeah I feel like he knows more that he's letting on <laughs> it's probably gonna be yeah, yeah I think I mean, I've said I mean, too much yeah. yeah it's probably gonna be a, a clubhouse vibe I mean he's trying to create the recreate yeah. the store the comedy store right yeah. in, environment yeah. Where, where yeah I get that I, might, well, I mean, yeah. that's what they turned the Vulcan into, essentially. essentially you know, mm -hmm. and now that he has his own space, that's probably what that'll become. That's where mm -hmm. Kiltonia is, right? The Vulcan. Vul Vulcan yeah. is there now. It'll, I mean, I, I don't know what what they're planning, but are they gonna? Are, are they planning on moving I to Rogan's? Yeah, I think they're moving over there now. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so it's gonna leave a big hole. Uh, what what you know? It the might, the like, politics offset. of comedy will be interesting because it's gonna leave a hole in Vulcan, right? Uh, a been power vacuum. All, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you got other production companies like Big Laugh and everything that are trying to you, you know have fill the void. There. Fill the void, man. So there's plenty. There's plenty of work out there. Not it's kind of like Afghanistan. There's <laughs> 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 <Sorry. laughs> a power vacuum for you. Yeah. You got the comedian Taliban's fucking <laughs> wherever the oil's at. Yeah, for sure. The comedian cartel. Yeah, that's really the goal. The goal is like get so fucking good, right? That's why I roll with people like Javi. I gotta get so fucking good to where like if by chance Danny Brown is like, hey bro, we're over here with Rogan, bro. Like yeah, we're mm -hmm. at the Rogan's club. Oh yeah, is Rogan there? No, I don't know if he's here, but like like um like I, Eddie Bravo thinks I did well the night that I met him. Yeah, he did that, great. That's why he uh 
that's why he uh, like wanted to stay and said like, "Hey man, man, that, yeah, you're funny, bro. Man, we gotta do some shit." At that's, the Conspiracy Social Club event. Yeah, with the Sam trip. Yeah, lead. right, right. Yeah, Sam. I knew Sam first. Sam showed me love. I, I, I was into jujitsu, but I didn't know how big of a deal Eddie Bravo was. And like half the crowd was jujitsu people. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. Like he didn't know. Like it, it was that. That was awesome. I mean, I, I didn't know like Brazilians say the R as an H. Yeah, I didn't know a lot of shit. I didn't know the order of the colors of the belts, and I didn't. Now know, he's got I, two stripes. Now I know how to do some shit. Let's go. I'll be at the airport. I wore my Urban Jungle sweater uh, through the airport, just let motherfuckers know yeah. <laughs> some well, shit go down. Hey, you want to sit me in the aisle? <laughs> Put me in that. Uh, what do they call that? The emergency exit. Uh-huh. Put me in that row. Yeah. Did you see that crazy guy on the plane uh, yesterday or today that was like saying it was like a midair emergency? Like you know, call the FBI, ha- shoot me, have him shoot me. That's the only way I'm getting off this plane. <laughs> you didn't see it? No, Damn. dude. Sometimes no. they sometimes they got agents on the plane. Not that plane. Oh yeah. wow. So yeah, it's people, not all of them. They can't. Uh, sometimes yeah. you got just, baby Glock on there. That's what they needed. All the dudes around there were just kind of like with their heads down, didn't even get up. So they, he was just he wild. just got up, started being wild, just yelling shit like in midair, midair. Well, I'd have been like, boy, you so, better sit your motherfucking so that, ass down, boy. But, but so then, so then, so then, what I'd happened took, though? I'd have took my goddamn the, shirt off, bro. I took that shit off, bro. They just seen about, they just seen about two tattoos, boy. You know what I'm Put both these stripes yeah. on you. They just seen little love handles and shit. <laughs> he sees the Gracie, the Gracie tattoos. You got the Gracie triangle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I got the Urban Jungle Gorilla, big dot. Yeah. <laughs> the silver back on my back. Uh, I don't know how. I didn't watch the whole clip. My daughter oh, just okay. did the the tournament. She's four. Yeah, and, she, and here's the funniest shit though. I don't know if I can turn this into a bit, but like, my wife, bro, she gets really intense, and she, my wife, she used to do jujitsu, so she don't know like good coaching instructions, like Penny, you know, hip escape or uh, trap his arm or you know, shrimp out, shrimp out, none of that. She's just like, echatelo, 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 and it was a little Indian boy that she was, uh, that Penny was, uh, I guess, competing. rolling with, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sparring, I guess they had a match, and uh, and Marisol's like, Echatelo! like, like bullying Penny into like musker. Don't use technique. Mm. She wanted her to like musker up the rage to like muscle her way out of a situation. And the Indian parents, the the young couple, they're there and they're just she's, they're just like <laughs> they're being technical, like <laughs> leg, o- like, leg over her head, leg over her head, bring the arm back. No, no, no. They were more. No, they don't know shit. Trust uh, me. Like I've tried talking to them during class. Where yeah. I'm just like, hey, uh, why'd y'all pick jujitsu? And I'm like mm. trying to tell them like. Make sure your son sticks with it. Like, it's amazing. Mm. It's, it's done so much for me. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, they were tr- tripping on the Spanish my wife is yelling. So they're just kind of like, ah, it's, it's just kids, right? <laughs> that was like their whole thing. It was like, uh, you know, it's okay. The little kid's like, what is she calling me? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just, what does that mean? Yeah. Echatelo, Penny, echatelo. <laughs> God damn. That was yeah. life or death right there. For real, right? This is Sparta. <laughs> and every she had like five matches that day. And uh, every once in a while, I had to take the one year, one and a half year old out front because she wants to be everywhere. So I like take her out front, outside. And I hear, it, it's a bodega, right? It's a big old warehouse. So I hear, they must have like the, the bays open. I'm hearing fucking, Vale! <laughs> estoy diciendo! And I'm like, oh, I think she has a match. She's back on the mat. She's back on the mat. Let's go inside. Shit. Intense. Yeah. You know Marisol, of bro. Of course, of course. She, she used to be a smoker, too, so she got that little raspy voice. <laughs> she does. <laughs> Her allergies be fucked up, so yeah, it was like extra raspy. Was it an in-gym competition? Yeah, or? In, yeah in-gym. Oh, okay. And then they had these kids. You, you heard of Virtues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, I think like out in Deer Park. Yeah, from Deer Park. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, these little boys, these kids come in like Cobra Kai. Nice. Oh, cool they're shit. like, I guess, a uh, so subsidiary, like sister school type uh-huh. of thing. And uh, these little kids come in just straight arm bars out the gate, you know, cut to the chase. Mm. No it's bullshit. Over. It's no over. bullshit. Ain't no, Send po- ain't no points. Send location. Yeah, ain't no points. Yeah. We're not doing point system, bro. Do you compete, Danny? Uh, I did. Like, uh, I competed maybe like twice. Um, but yeah, it's been a while though. I did like this pro gla- grappling match, uh, and they didn't have the guy that was I was supposed to go up against got injured or something. So the guy was just like, "Hey, only guy I have your size is a purple belt." At the time, I was a blue belt. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Fuck it, bro!" I was freaking out about it. I remember mm-hmm. I told uh, told my coach, I told Tony, I was like, "Hey, I'm, the rule sets are different now. Like he could like probably break my leg. He he's could like, hook you. He's like, "Nah, it's fine." <laughs> 
he just that's how he it's called just me back. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is it, yeah. So how'd you do? How'd it go? Oh, dude, I lost in like the second minute. <laughs> oh, just, it took about two minutes. How'd he get you? Uh, heel hook, of course. Oh, which is what I was worried about. <laughs> tap often. Tap, yeah. tap quick. Tap often. Oh, so you already knew it was gonna be a heel type of. Oh, yeah. I already. Knew. I saw him drilling that stuff in the back. I'm just like, I don't know he's, the defense. You see him rolling for Eminari rolls, just trying to grab the ankle. Yeah, I saw him with the drilling partners. I'm like, bro. This is a wrap. Is it the heel hook? Is that where they stick it like in the armpit area? Yeah, yeah, and your ankle, knee, and hip. Yeah, all that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> you know my knee. I'm just recovering my knee. That's why I've been kind of missing. I've been slacking. So my knee's a little bit better, bro. They did a uh, an MMA class. They did a a single leg type of takedown, and it kind of hyperextended. I just heard like a. Fuck. I think you need to watch some more David Goggins videos. <laughs> to do what? To get back out knee? there. No, get back in there. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm going tonight. Yeah, nice. I'm going tonight, but uh, I've, I've been having to do a bunch of shit with my knee, dog, but fuck it. Hey, what, what competition was that? What show? Or what uh, uh, event? It was uh, called Submission Hunter. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, bro, after I lost that, I was like, I think I'm a... The one in Humble? I'm gonna start going up. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it, yeah, I was in the Humble uh, yeah. Civic Center. Yeah, Eric Garcia's events. He yeah. puts on good events. Oh, yeah, he really does, bro. Yeah, I felt like I was like a pro up there. It was. You get the stage and everything, yeah, the you lights get, and the intro. A, you get a song and everything. Hell yeah. forever to figure out what song I wanted. What'd but, you come what, out to? Uh, just a Feel Good Inc. by the Gorillas. Okay. Just because the, the gym good. is a gorilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have said Puro Party by Chingo Bling. Like, hey, feel <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was the first event? What was the first tournament? Uh, it was just like a local tournament called Battleground. Oh, yeah. Um, at the time, I was like 135, so they just put me up against a bunch of kids. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <love. laughs> yeah, dude. I went up against a kid who had a like an Avengers Iron Man onesie. <laughs> I was like, damn, I feel bad. Fucking when, Kramer when, over here when, killing the kids. <laughs> when you say kids, what what would you mean? Like just youngsters? Time, yeah, yeah, they were like eighth graders, 14, 15. But a lot of those kids have been like training. Yeah, for, they'll fuck you up. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. These little kids fuck you up. Fuck yeah. Uh, There's a place, uh, the dark side, they had this kid, they used to call him the professor. He was like probably 11, 12. He'd fuck everybody up. Mm -hmm. Adults or kids, didn't matter. Yeah, they're out there, bro. Yeah, they, they exist. They're, they're scary kids out there. Yeah, that could be Penelope for sure if she keeps at it. Hopefully, but she don't be listening, bro. Like, I'm telling her, like, yo, we need to practice when we get home. Like, yeah. I got to have you doing some shit. So this, yeah. um, the Axel Rad, the one minute. Have you heard of that, Javi? The one minute thing that he was saying? That, uh, Axel, Axel Rad? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I did Axel Rad. I don't know if I did one. I might have done Who runs that, one the one minute? minute. Well, they, they do. Show, uh, it's uh, Jeff yeah. Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, Jeff's thing yeah he, so he does the one minute thing. He does a show on Mondays and a show on Fridays. Yeah. And then Sunday they have like a one minute open mic where you get to go up. Oh, okay. I think I did the Monday one one time. Yeah. I was down here doing something with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just did a show like. I we got to get Jeff Joe on here. We yeah, bro. Yeah, he's the man, bro. He's, he's cool yeah. as fuck. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So I was just doing the mics there just kind of with Kill Tony in mind because I was like, yeah, I'm going to go back one day. I'm going to try to sign up again. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that was like a perfect workout for it, really. That's good. So and how, it, it uh, helps because some, sometimes, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. No, you good. Uh, but like uh, back when certain auditions, like when they used to do the NBC thing, Stanford University, that was a one minute audition. Like everyone lined up outside the joke joint, you know. And sometimes you didn't even get the full minute if they if like your first like joke you fell was, off. And they're like, okay, thank you. And, and you got <laughs> We've off. seen it, enough. Yeah, yeah. If you got to do the full minute, like like as it, it was literally because there were so many comics, they were like. And not everyone's gonna do the full minute. If we feel like we've gotten a, a good idea of what you do, it doesn't mean that we cut. It, not even that we that you didn't do good. You know, if they cut you off, they're like, because like for me, I think I don't even think I did the full minute. I think maybe I did like thirty, forty five seconds, and and I got to the set the the callback. You know, so but doing stuff like that, that's great. That there's a, a a mic, a whole mic like that that Jeff's doing because it tra kind of trains you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's like usually like a good crowd there and everything too. So. Just like knowing what works and what doesn't, because I mean, yeah. there's some like some mics you, or you know, just stuff for like people. There's no crowd at all, so you don't know what works and what doesn't. No yeah. feedback. <laughs> yeah, I had to do a three minute set the other night for a showcase for uh, that Kenan Thompson thing. You might have seen him on and, SNL. And, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, from NBC, SNL, Nickelodeon fame. You know, all that. In, in case you're not familiar. And, and they, they wanted a three minute set. And I, I had to, like, I was like, God damn, what jokes do I got that'll fit in three minutes? Because I'm used to a little bit yeah. lo longer form now, you know, so, mm -hmm. so it's great that you get that. That short mic, that's cool. Yeah, cause like like headlining, like Javi's used to headlining, or he does me the favor to feature for me. You know, like fuck, I feature for you, motherfucker. Goddamn, I feature for this little white belt. Yeah, it's a favor. Yeah, for yeah, real. Yeah, let's call it that. But yeah, but yeah, right. But like, it's it's almost like two different art forms, right? Because when you actually have time to flesh out 
like, okay, I'm gonna start off with this as my intro, then I'm gonna slowly go into this, and then I'm gonna talk about this, whatever, and then you can do a story or, you know, or like be on a subject for five minutes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They really get, you know, the audience gets to see like your whole act really. Right. And you but just, it's different. Like, it's a di- it's a different muscle. Yeah. Totally. It, totally. You know? yeah. So it's great that you get you got a spot to keep that that muscle working mm-hmm. basically what i'm trying to say is uh you got a uh, tony hinchcliffe number uh, tony, <laughs> you tell tony about me hey man it's a I dude it. man you know? <laughs> oh yeah i have you got it oh I'm, i met tony hinchcliffe randomly one time he probably don't even, i was just like a dude it was in front of the comedy store and i was with like a bunch of like latino motherfuckers right like mm-hmm. these, a bunch of socal latino like hey fool a dick you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Jerry. I'm talking about Jerry Garcia. Uh, HBO internals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have been like Sepulveda, maybe Trejo was with us. He might have been like the connect at the store. But it was just like random. Uh, it might have been like XG, the you know, the podcast producer. Mm-hmm. It was just random motherfuckers, right? And uh and Tony Hitchcliffe comes out there and he, he just starts he's just kinda like in our circle now. I guess he figured like oh somebody's doing the comics and he's just standing there, he's like, Oh and he's and he's I didn't I didn't catch it at first. I'm like, oh, wait, is he trying to roast us? Yeah. Like, what is he doing? Because he's like, ah, I had no idea there's going to be a meeting with the Diaz brothers. Something, <laughs> something, something. I was like, what? I, didn't, I don't know. She was like, I had a bad set. I was hungry. Yeah. Well, yeah, they see, dude. No, I didn't even perform oh. in a comedy store. But, like, sometimes, like, anything Mexican or brown, like, it just throws people off. Yeah. Where they're just like, that's the only thing they see. Uh, for example, uh, when I performed in New York one time, at, it was like my actual headline tour stop, and we had like Cypher Sounds and Chris DiStefano open up, right? Mm-hmm. That's where I met Chris. And um, and they were like, oh shit, uh, a bunch of fucking Mexicans. All right, what do I know about burritos? Uh, fuck. Uh, like they're having to rearrange everything when I'm thinking to myself, Bro, these are New Yorkers first. Like, yeah, they right. have a heritage, but they live the New York lifestyle, New York culture. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to have a way easier job than me. And then also, uh, Mark Gagnon, he opened up for us in Tampa. Same thing. He just saw a bunch of Mexicans. He was like, mm. oh, fuck. So he felt like he had to switch up everything. And, and you don't. And, 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 and so I know we like jokes too. And that goes, well, but that goes back to what you were saying earlier too about how, like, you feel like when you do rooms like the secret room or whatever, you're like, oh, I think they're they're expecting this from me and I want to go another way. You know, it, it's I gotta little, be all it's ghetto. little head games we, we play. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, the, you know, whatever you think their preconceived notion about you might be. And then you're like, I gotta go the other way. Where if you would have just done what you would normally do, you know, and be, believe funny is funny. You know what I'm saying? It's okay if not everyone there appreciates it. If some someone that has a decent sense of humor, it doesn't matter if they have the same background as you or not, or or if they dig that you're not their style or whatever. Well, fuck it. They, I'm not their style. Fucking move, move on to the next. Room, last time I the next stage. You know? Last time I did Secret Group. Uh, damn, what's the, what's that Asian cat from Houston? Long hair. He had just did like a Netflix thing. Oh. um... Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the Sh- name's Shane Wang. Yes, him. Mm-hmm. He was kind of like the special guest, and I think he was. I think he went on. I think he went on right before me, mm-hmm. and uh, and he he did well. And yeah. um, he, I saw that he had, like, the choices he was making. It was very almost like New York basement kind of uh, conversational. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe okay. Fuck that joke type of thing. Like he's like leaning all into this curtain that they have back there and this and that. Mm-hmm. And, and then I go up there and I'm just like, okay, there was a dude in the front row wearing like a leather halter top skirt thing. And I was just like, I got to fucking go in on the, the mm-hmm. did y'all see the motherfucker? And I'm like, I have mm-hmm. to. Everyone saw the fucking big old dude in the little leather skirt. So those are the choices that I was making. Like, look at the little millennial motherfuckers. You know, don't know why a bacon and egg taco costs $15. Motherfucker, y'all goddamn millennials. And I was like, mm. I had to. <laughs> I know exactly who that is, too. He's a regular there, bro. <laughs> the big guy in the leather. Yeah. Yeah, what, yeah, what's yeah. up with that dude, bro? I, I don't what's know. What's his pronoun? <laughs> he likes leather, man. <laughs> no clue. But yeah, he's a comedy he's fan. A, he sits in the front all the time. Same what man. I remember saying. Yeah, in rooms like that, you got guys like that. that they're, the, they're just there. Yeah. And every and every fucking show that's yeah. there, you know, the Rotten supporters, autistic comedy probably. appreciators. At, at the time, pronouns they, are autistic. Yeah. <laughs> at the time, Dave Chappelle was in hot water over like his trans uh, special thing. Right. So I was like, yeah, Dave Chappelle, watch his mouth 
around this motherfucker. I was like, I was like, he'll switch up his. I said, Dave Chappelle, come in here right now. He'll fucking switch up his whole set. Well, he showed up at the secret group, right? Didn't he do like two hours there? Like, when oh, he, was... he showed up at uh, at Rudyard's. At Rudyard's. Yeah, what? yeah, he showed up to like Dave. You talking about Dave Chappelle, uh-huh. right? Yeah, he showed up to Rudyard's one night. I think at an open mic and did like a bunch of time. Yeah, and they said the room was empty, and then like word of mouth just. People were just, hey, Dave Chappelle's here, and just the room filled out right. like in less than thirty minutes, probably. Right. Well, I heard, I, I had heard <laughs> from so, I, I, and I, I, I know the, I know he was dropping in a couple places in Texas right around that time when it was kind of like, oh, oh, Rogan might be coming, thinking about coming to Texas, and then like, was it going to be here? Was it going to be Austin? Kind of, kind of thing. Well, shit. Well, and, I was like during the pandemic. Huh? No, that was pre. That was even pre. Yeah, I think that was pandemic. before, maybe. Yeah. yeah. When he just started popping up. You know, oh. you know, this was right when Chappelle was starting to like he hadn't come like back. reemerged. He hadn't reemerged yet. He hadn't done the first Netflix special even yet. Mm-hmm. It hadn't come out. And I, I know that's so, how I know so you was, got long money. Yeah, you could just lay low for years, just yeah. not do nothing, not have to. Yeah, just live life. Yeah, right, like a normal person. Yeah. Barbecue, <laughs> <laughs> barbecue, shit. Play with your kids. Yep. What the fuck? <laughs> live an actual life. Yeah, yeah. Have a life. Yeah, an actual life where you can actually talk about yeah. some shit. <laughs> It helps. Yeah, it has some material. It helps. You gotta Comics. live. Yeah, so you don't just gotta work, work, work. You, you can live too. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I mean that that you know George you know George Carlin said said the best. I know I never run out of material as long as I keep to take in new information. Yeah. You know so 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 if com be be careful that fucking comedy becomes your life shit because yeah. that, that yeah. means then then you're just pulling from the same well of thought that everyone else is. You gotta keep keep living. That's some life. good game, right? Yeah. Live, that man. is good game. I was just gym. Thinking, yeah, I was just thinking about that, like, uh, like whenever shit's just like real busy, how do I even start thinking about new stuff? Like, if I'm just constantly in the comedy club or at bars or whatever it is that I'm performing at, like, how do I even mm-hmm. think of something outside of this? Because you're having to dedicate so much time to it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then another gift and curse is like when you start putting stand up. Like right now, Javi's in the phase right now, but he has a ton of material. But he's starting to leak clips, and then the special is out. Mm-hmm. So sometimes. People start feeling that pressure of like, yo, congrats, bro. I see your fucking clips going ham. It's like, yeah, but now I got to fucking write some more shit. And it took yeah. me so long to come up with that. So yeah. just be ready, bro. Yeah. yeah. But we ain't never scared. That's the heel hook. That's the heel hook. That's the heel hook of comedy, bro. It's full circle. It's always jujitsu. And, and then, too, yeah, another thing, too, bro, is like when you're in demand from doing a thing, whether it's like coming up with lyrics at your house, coming up with jokes, like whatever that thing is. Um, now you become in demand and now you're having to like, you know, hit the road and people want you. So now you, obviously you're making money and you're out and about. But now the road starts to take, keep you away from your actual career. Mm-hmm. You start having less time to create the shit that people liked in the first place. And then they start fucking, where's the fucking, hey, what's up, bro? When we're going to get more of this and more of that? And, <laughs> You know. Yeah, oh, he fell off. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hey, about? no more music or what? <laughs> sketches, like, bitch. Yeah. Trying, yeah. Fuck it, dog. Sometimes, you know, hey, and, and guess what? Fall offs happen. You just fucking, <laughs> you know, it's just like tapping out, big dog. You know, yeah. it's a building it's, season. You got to fall off often. Do y'all, uh, <laughs> do y'all like sit down and write? Or how does that process work for y'all? I'll let him go. I like how Chico looked over. Well, he's more of a writer. <laughs> I, I, I'm about to piss a bunch of people off. No, come on. I, for me, I don't write. I write for other people, but I don't write. For me, I no, I don't write. I have, I have, it's like Jay Z, bro. I have, <laughs> uh, yeah, 99 percent of my writing's done on stage. On stage. Mm-hmm. You just kind of uh, have an outline. Yeah, yeah. A, 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 a premise, an idea. I would have like had a thought about it before. If if anything, if I, if it's something that I like, I really really like. What I'll do is I'll uh, text message it to my wife, you know, and and I know because then I know it's there. I can scroll back through our text and, and kind of find it. Uh, I and, can't do that with my wife. She texts too much. And I believe in in like a like a, a muse situation. If it's really that good of a premise, it's gonna come back to me on on stage, you know. And and that so most so of you literally don't even me. jot down in the notes. No. Fuck. That's like next level. I do, I do not write. I don't own a pen, a pencil. Yeah. I, yeah. You deleted the notes app off your phone. Mm-hmm. I have notes, a notes app in my phone, where it's basically like the material that I'm doing now, like for this year. So the way I come up with shit is like, it, it, this probably is going to be like bad advice. I don't like mm-hmm. sit around waiting for stuff to happen, right. but there's just so much shit in my life between like relationship, kids. Uh, shit that I go through, like I'm always the butt of the joke. Like all this jujitsu stuff, I got a bunch of fucking 
a couple little bits and stuff that's about that where I'm able to clown myself yeah. and uh uh, some shit that happened in Cal Allen, you know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to shit your pants. You know, it was a white gee. Right. <laughs> I'm a big believer in working it out in conversation, right? Like in the yeah. car, something happened. Like, hey, let, let everyone go around. Let's kind of tag it or whatever. And then you kind of make a, a, a mental note. I guess you, I mean, you can jot it down. I, look, I my, my memory, it's just my memory. I don't have to. Like, like if it if it was really that good, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna remember it. Is what it comes down that, to. That's crazy because I write it down and I forget parts. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, but you know, I don't know if there's any like younger, newer comics that listen to this or whatever. I'm not saying telling you not like that's not a good thing. Yeah, yeah like, don't I, let that my normal. That wasn't yeah. me bragging like like oh yeah I don't write shit down like like man I, sometimes I wonder like I wish I had the discipline I had when I was first starting out because I was that guy like 30 minutes every morning writing, 30 minutes every night writing, you know. I think it's just I did that for so many years that that muscle just developed so much. Like, when I come up with a premise or I come up with a joke, like, I know it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, I know I'm going to make it work. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's just having that confidence out of out of just the time, the when, time, the when, stages. The- when I first started dipping my toe in the uh, comedy world, um, I think the first time I saw Javi was at the, the Pizza Mesquite. Yeah, probably. I believe. Unless yeah. you I were, I think maybe one. I think we had, had done one at some like cantina with you in San Antonio. Was that one was yeah, first? Yeah, yeah. But there was like twenty comics on that. Yeah, yeah. So we, ne- we didn't get to like. Yeah. Talk. Okay, or I could. Okay, I, yeah. I guess my order is a little jacked up. Yeah. Uh, that's when I first started uh, dating Marisol too, and she, and I was new at comedy too. So like, I'd go to a mic, and she'd be like, <laughs> "Okay," because <laughs> it was weird. like bad. The yeah. ideas, the premises. I didn't even know yeah. how to approach it. I stole a bunch of corn nuts that first time I met you. <laughs> we, we were at a at a at a bar south side in San Antonio, man. <laughs> and, and like, I remember, like there was twenty comics. I, I was like low key like. Like, man, I was like, man, what is this? Why are there so many comics? And there were some dudes there that were, like, doing other people's jokes from, like, the oh, 90s. Like, like, man. and as a comedy purist, like, I was I was pressed that night. I was like, oh, fuck this. So I went back to the green room, and, and they had, like, a whole bunch of, like, corn nuts and hot Cheetos and honey buns. And we weren't getting paid shit for the show, right? Just it was just, we just wanted to be on the show with Chingo. Uh, so everyone did did the show damn, for free. So I, I know was I was like, the anchor. So I was all like, oh, yeah, yeah, they used your name. Like, like so I, I, was, I, was all like, I was like, shit, let me get some, some corn nuts fucking, <laughs> a couple honey buns <laughs> fucking driving to San Antonio motherfuckers out here stealing idea. jokes yeah, motherfuckers out here yeah. oh recycle that boy get this is this should teach them to stop recycling people's shit yeah. <laughs> it's seven dollars in snacks yeah dude <laughs> yeah. We have, there's a picture somewhere I'll find it maybe I'll send it to you for the episode okay. where I, I had like a, a plaid shirt on and I, I had tucked it in People will see the picture like, why was your shirt tucked in? It's full of honey buns. I had it full full of hot Cheetos and shit. (laughs) Oatmeal cream pies. Why is he crunching when he walked by? (laughs) Golly. Good shit. Yeah, I remember that day the refrigerator, the the freezers for the ice machines Mm -hmm. were like louder. Oh, that was the pizza place. Yeah, we were. Oh, no, no, no. The the cantina was like that too. But I remember I, I saw Javi go up in Corpus and then he was like, over playing video games at the uh, Mesquite, the original location. And I walked up to him. I was like, Senor, <laughs> you're the chosen one. I was like, yo, bro. Like, it was impressive to be like, oh, shit. Like, I'm seeing it done well in person at this level. Meaning, I, I, it was kind of like, damn, bro. Like, you a diamond in the rough. Like, well, shit. How long, man, how, how you know how to do this shit? How long you been doing this shit? Like, where the fuck you from? Where you come from, Ese? <laughs> out of nowhere, if you ask people Out of on nowhere, TikTok. carnal. E, if you, you ask know, the, the, the TikTok streets. sensation, bro. Y'all just Is that finding what they say, bro? Y'all just, y'all just find, finding Is out, Is that man. what they say? So I said, Texas best kept secret, man. No, I've been hey. down there in Corpus. Ain't no comedy in Corpus. Yeah. Well, that's what Tony Hinchcliffe and them told him in Hollywood. They're like, yeah. oh, why do you still live in Corpus Christi, Texas, yeah. if you're this good? Ain't that some shit? And now look at them. And now they all live over exactly. here. And now they moved over Talking here. Talking about, hey man, you got a room in Brownsville? Yeah. I can probably. Yeah. <laughs> in Beaumont. Hey bro, is Beaumont far? <laughs> Motherfucker, <laughs> get on your GPA. Yeah, they That's don't right. know where nothing is. Three hours is far to them. <laughs> when I got to visit the uh, Tom Segura Studios, no talking about Yama no Tom you know, from little, two two bears one K. <laughs> YMH. Yeah, a little bit YMH. I'm talking about shout out Christina P. Um, I never met them. I don't know. <laughs> I know Danny Brown. It's it's a, that's the only name reason. drop episode. That's the only reason I was there. But anyway, um, I remember all the production guys. Like there was a big staff in that fucking facility. I mean, there's like the look like the COO, the CFO, the CEO, like the fucking receptionist, the lobby, and then all the production people that do cameras and stuff. And um, 
And I remember them saying, they're like, yeah, bro, like we all literally just moved from Cali, bro. Like we, we're none of us in room here. Like not one person on the squad in that production house under that roof is a mm -hmm. motherfucking local. Mm -hmm. So it's the blind leading the blind mm -hmm. in terms of like, where's a good Mexican food place? Like what's the hood? Where do you not, what's not safe to go at night <laughs> or, or anything like that? Ain't that some shit? It's a good point. You should go in there and be like, hey, let me show you the ropes, the Can Texas I, yeah, ropes. Let me be the liaison. Yeah, the consultant. Ambassador. YMH Texas and consultant. Yeah, ambassador. You know, <laughs> ambassador. Like that, maybe. So, yeah. so where, where are you at here in, in, in Houston? Where, where, like what side of town? No, like clubs. Like, Urban jungle. I mean, where do you get around at? Uh, usually at, uh, at Rudyard's. Rudyard's. Um, the Riot Comedy Club. Uh -huh. and they got like a room upstairs that's pretty good for comedy. Um, and then the Seeger Group. That's pretty much it. I mean, those I'll go to like spots. other little spots around town, but those are probably like prime time, like uh, stage time. Here. That's they, they put you up, they put you on shows and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, cool. They made rugs yeah. nice, man. They got neons and shit. Bro, right? yeah, it looks really nice, man. They changed the stage to like a different part of the the room. Oh. So like, I think they they fill it out a little bit more. But yeah, yeah, it's been real good for comedy. Man. And what nights is uh, Rudd's? Rudyard's? Man, I think I think I like from Wednesday to Sunday. From Wednesday, yeah, from Wednesday Thursday, to Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Damn, they were yeah. that like that. I think they like just started. They're a full time club now. Yeah. They trying to rattle the cage of the Houston Improv a little mm -hmm. bit, right? Yeah, hey. somebody needs to. Is Rogers in uh, Montrose? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Man, I've been there in years. Yeah, yeah. They're doing a bunch of stuff over there now. Then they're doing a comedy festival in like two weeks over yeah. there. So yeah, they're, comedy yeah. festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They, huh. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I uh, sent a tape for that one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they wanted three minutes. They wanted three minutes. I was like, "This, this is what I got." Three minutes. Man. Yeah. Like, How's that gonna work? It's like a whole weekend worth of just a bunch of shows. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just doing shows. I think they're like open it up. Um, might have like extra rooms, you know, just for all the shows and like live podcasts, all types of shit. Yeah. Interesting. I might have to free up my uh, my schedule. <laughs> I'm saying let a white belt pull up. <laughs> Festivals are cool, man. They're 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 they're, they're fun. They they're good for networking as a, as a comic, and you get to do a bunch of shows. Man, I did I did that one at the Secret Group one time. Boy, the one where it was inside and outside. I don't I don't remember the outside part. I just remember like it being chaos in that little bitty box room. That's where mm -hmm. I met Jesse Payton. Jesse Payton was hosting. And I'm just like, okay, like, what, yeah. what time do I, how long, what time is this shit ending? Who, where do I get paid? Yeah. Who's in charge? Yeah, it's got to be a well-run run festival. And, oh, yeah. and that's why, the reason I was interested in, 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 in these guys, I've never worked with them, but I know for a fact that, that they went to some other well-run festivals and did their research mm. and, and figured out how, and, and their, uh, they did their, a lot of festivals, you like, when you, you, you pay your entry fee, you don't know if your tape ever got saw or not. Like, and then the, just the list comes out of who got selected, and you're like, "Oh, well, I'm funny." And then do wait, wait, and they get selected, whatever. They did all theirs like live, live, uh, live judging on mm -hmm. through Discord or one of the, one of those where yeah. you can watch it and they give you your, your score. They like streamed. This it? is why you did, yeah they streamed it, which is a little little. So I got to the second round. Like I sent a video in. There was like some old video that I had. And whatever, and, and I forgot about it. They sent me the email, and they're like, "Oh, oh, you're in the next round of, of judging to see if you get into the festival." I was like, oh, "Okay, cool." And I, I happened just not be doing another one. I got the email like, "Oh, your live judging starts in in ten minutes." I was like, "Oh shit, well, let me see," you know, whatever. And, the Google you know. alert on your name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, what what happened was I sent them I sent them one camera angle of what later became my special. <laughs> Oh. It, 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 but it wasn't edited or, or anything, so it was just like literally the, nice. the angle that I that I had. So it wasn't a front shot. I mean, it, it, there, there's reasons why why it didn't you know probably didn't uh, do as well as the first clip I had had sent them. But they wanted a new clip, so I was just like, oh, here, here's a new clip. Yeah, you watch it, whatever. Yeah, I tried to get in it too. They had like a a competition. Oh. They had a competition here in Houston just for like local comics. Uh -huh. um, man, yeah, that that room felt like electric that night. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, I, I didn't get to the next round. But which is tough because you know you'd like you. I mean, you actually perform there. You know you'd like that that room up on a on, oh yeah on a festival. Yeah, because people that go to comedy festivals are comedy fans. It's mm -hmm. different. It's different performing for just people that just love comedy. They don't care who the comics are. Like they just they just appreciate the art form versus mm -hmm. people that are going because they're a fan of of you or of your comedy like that's that's a completely different yeah again muscle that you got to develop which is why working out is the term the comics use because that's what you're doing you're you're trying to 
to build and the tools and the muscles that you need to 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 do this exactly you know for real <laughs> yeah yeah and i feel like if you're paying like a hundred dollars for like a weekend pass you better laugh bro better be some you better have a good time yeah, over dude, there. That, that psychology <laughs> behind it i i, I want to have a good time yeah i i, I, I paid money to have this <laughs> yeah. good time yeah. like, I'm, this is the best time of my life yeah. <laughs> no, we i'm having tons of fun what <laughs> you better be laughing at this. yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, you have uh, you got any bomb stories, man? Oh man, yeah. Uh, I think we just need one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on, I have five right yeah, now. Um, I think probably, um, probably the worst bomb I've had was like in front of my family. No, oh, yeah, shit. yeah. I was doing a show. I don't do it. And like, uh, no, mijo, pues, nah, I don't do it. Yeah, like, nah, get back to work. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never hear that. Bro, you, you, could, you could blow up tomorrow, man. That's to be, they'll still remember that one time. Yeah. Nah, I mean, then I saw him. I See. saw him. No one laughed. Uh, yeah. Remember you were crying <laughs> outside of Ruts? <laughs> remember I saw you crying in your car, bro? Yeah. <laughs> you still doing your little comedy thing? Yeah. You still, yeah, exactly. yeah, you're still punching air after shows? <laughs> <laughs> you still doing karate and trying yeah. to be funny, bro? Yeah, yeah. Damn, <laughs> doing karate trying to be funny. That's like my baby she calls it karate yeah, still dude, my whole, everybody in my neighborhood calls I don't, it karate I don't stop bro. my family from coming man but I don't invite them yeah. I don't invite them <laughs> yeah, I show up I show up but, that's on you but yeah yeah yeah. no this one night man my family showed up I, uninvited I didn't <laughs> mm. they asked me where I was gonna be at but mm. I just said you know it's gonna be over here you're working yeah that's and, all it is, yeah. and uh, I get there bro they're like in the front row so I just like, damn, dude. Like, I started thinking about, like, oh, I got to change up my set because they don't really know me like this. You know, usually I'm quiet at the dinner table. Now I'm over here making these crazy jokes. Talking about doing gay shit. Yeah, exactly. But I was like, oh. Hickeys no. on next. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk about this in front of them. But, yeah, uh, people's damn. expectations, that's the worst, man. Yeah. That's one thing I learned. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't have changed anything, but I tried to. And I was, like, super, like, this is probably, like, my third, fourth book yeah. show, maybe. Like, super just new into it, bro. And man just bombed and like uncomfortably bombed you know like sometimes you could bomb and you just like just power through it fuck it you like it's like you, awkward bomb yeah yeah it was a yeah it was an awkward bomb yeah. and i just left bro i think i got off stage maybe like a minute or two early oh and shit I, yeah and i just went up <laughs> <laughs> i just went upstairs bro and i was just like dad dude, i might just end it all tonight <laughs> that's it dude i'm jumping off the balcony this is it upstairs at axel Ray. Yeah. <laughs> damn yeah the worst damn. part about it though is if you know my family fucks with me all the time but they don't bring that up so they know it hurt me ah, <laughs> that's how you know yeah, yeah, yeah. they're aware they hello, of that they yeah. what, what club was that it was a secret group okay yeah yeah, yeah. it was like uh but because they don't understand what working out is yeah yeah, yeah. back it was, to it yeah it was like a slow night too so those maybe like they you don't know. understand <laughs> a room like that a good set is a kill at a at a club right right when it's yeah. a hot crowd right. mm -hmm. that's one thing i learned too boy it's, it's levels like like, for example, um, when, you know, when I first hit the comedy scene and we started hitting that stride where mm -hmm. it's like, holy shit, hey, bro, like, they got to add a show or like, dude, it fucking sold out or like shit like that. You know, before, you know, some of my political views maybe came out. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm playing. I don't know why. But uh, but anyway, um, like, say if Midnight or, or, or like Javi, somebody's on the show, they might be like, yo, bro, like, they'll come back like, bro, they're hot. Or like this is fucking this is like this is the bee's knees. Yeah. Like it's almost like I didn't really, I didn't really cut my teeth in some of those rough, like when nobody there, like all those type of nights. So Yikes. it's not. It's almost like I got spoiled to where I didn't really realize. Like bro, this is the fucking bee's knees, bro. You got four hundred people. Bee's knees. Why am I saying bee's knees? <laughs> but like you got like four hundred <laughs> people in this fucking room, like powerful belly laughs. They're they're drinking. Like it's like they're hot, dude. Now I know like. Yeah. The difference between like, yo, that's a hot fucking crowd versus like, all right, man, uh, you know, yeah, they come back there and they're like, all right, bro, um, <laughs> it's a Thursday, it's a Thursday, it's okay, you know, you know, yeah, you know, not every you, you can't stay hot forever, <laughs> but uh, anyway, we sent out an email, so some of the people might be, uh, yeah, but but like, you we, knew we'll that. pad the room, yeah. you knew that, and so you you do a great job, you know, even though you didn't have to do some of the like the painful rooms that a newer comic has has to do, I did you, painful rap shows. You, you put yourself. You did, you you did a great job of putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, doing show outside of your comfort zone, which really what it is what it is, right? That you're doing in those first few years. I even tell some of the comics in 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 Corpus, where I'm from, you know, they're kind of spoiled with with that comedy open mic we got on Thursday nights at Mesquite, because that's a those people come people come to that show on purpose. 
a lot of open mics you go to. Yeah, they're, they're, lie to they're, they're like they're in dinner. They're like, what's going on? Why, 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 why <laughs> ambushed someone, by why comedy. Why someone talking? Yeah, yeah <laughs> and, and it's not great. There's, you know, it, it's it's different. It's it's a it's a we made it a thing. You know, and those people go and they they support the open micers and they laugh at their jokes, even if the joke's new and maybe not not all that polished. Like, I was like, and you miss that that uh, that roughness to you you know versus like when i started in, in comedy in corpus there there was there was no comedy open mic i was doing it like at at rock clubs as a and and uh, it was a music open mic and they a uh, comedy your comedy okay you're gonna go up last you know so we i would go up at two o'clock in and in, in the morning while they're stack the bartender stacking <laughs> fucking bar stools and shit but but that that's what prepares you and sharpens you to to, to do the the real killing later yeah and then it's just easy this is Shit, this is easy. Y'all are actually listening to me? Shit, I got this. <laughs> That's what's cool about uh, like coming up with some comics because they've all, or even just meeting comics later on, is just like we've all been through those types of situations where most people wouldn't come back. Most yeah. people wouldn't even try it again off of like just the yeah. embarrassment, you know, um, a, nobody paying attention, all that shit. It's a lot of it just continuing to show up. Yeah. <laughs> show back up. <laughs> Keep sucking till you suck less, right? Yeah. yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the fuck, Rob? It's true. I mean, if you think about it, like... It, <laughs> hey, they be pulling Rob out of context. Like, <laughs> on the Discord, they roast him. <laughs> oh, dude. Some of the clips There's in there. There's so many. You got sound Yeah. Clips. It's like... Super bad. Rob sets himself up. He, they always say, Rob forgets how the internet works. Because <laughs> there's like... They have a treasure trove of clips of like... Like I'm not even gonna say it. Again. Well, the greatest hits like uh, no, I'm not even gonna say it again. Like, right? They think like, I don't know how it works. He'll he'll be quoting somebody and and then say some fucked up shit. And then sometimes my wife she'll be on the Discord. She'll be like, "Hey, why did Rob say this?" I was like, "Oh, I mean, I don't know." Uh, she's like, "She's like, well, what's the context?" I was like, "Fuck, I don't know. I don't remember." We say so much <laughs> shit. Honestly, I forget. Like, I wanted to suck his cock. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's now like, she and don't forget. To, he's like, and I wanted to see him come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know what we say so much shit i forget what, what the stories are but man i've got some gnarly clips of myself they got a soundboard to it a rob sound so many sounds i couldn't even fit them on this fucking board they just clip they clip everything out of context and then it's one, great yeah one time my wife put him on the spot on her podcast she was like she's like yeah so apparently uh a lot of people that do this gay stuff on these uh websites or whatever they uh they get paid to do it and they're really not gay and this and that and she was like rob would you she because she watches those she watches those soft white yeah. underbelly interviews mm -hmm. right the question was what, what would you do for for 10 grand like how gay would you be you know for 10 grand and i was like well what's gay or you know or how gay is gay and just <laughs> and, fucking and he was like i don't know but he was like i don't even want to answer this because i know they're going to take it out of contact <laughs> yeah. and sure enough they did yeah, of course they did. <laughs> like real good fans like well, true I fans. what episode was that because uh, yeah, I don't think I want to share. Did I don't want to get an answer for out of you though. <laughs> no. No, you didn't give her an answer. Actually, I may have. She, she. I think she said. Uh, I don't know. I think we might have talked about pegging. Here's a question for you. <laughs> Would you be pegged for a hundred grand? Well, what's pegging again? <laughs> Where she puts it on and goes for a hundred grand. For hundred grand. <laughs> Just in and on, out. On video. Just in and out. On oh, video. You took on it to another internet. level. Nobody said oh, on the internet. Just, oh, it's just 100K <laughs> yeah. straight peg. Yeah. Just to do it. No, no video. And it's she your can, girl. She's going to record it for herself, but you don't know what she's going to do so with it's it. Your, oh. It's your girl. It's your girl. Oh. says 100 grand. My how, how big is the peg? Ooh, my girl. Well, I mean, I trust my girl. I don't know where she where, where's she getting the hundred grand from. So, why, why does my girl have a hundred? So grand many questions. All of, all of a sudden, like, I got, I got. He's like, I why got, so oh, much? Like, well, he's not saying no. Is what we're learning here. He's well, not saying no. I mean, a hundred grand. You know, I could, I could do some things with a hundred grand, Rob. I mean, you could do a lot of things I, with that peg I, too. I, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm practice, practical is what I'm saying. Like, like, you know, I'm a realist. Yeah, inflation's know. high. Yeah, yeah. You know, Javi's like, just, uh, give me a minute to warm up, man. <laughs> like, how big is the pay? Do I have time to plan? And <laughs> that prepare? cactus right there behind you. Yeah, La yeah. madre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna, is yeah, hundred grand minus the cost of reconstructive surgery. <laughs> <laughs> carry the <laughs> yeah, yeah. carry the donkey. Yeah. Carry the months. Yeah, or like spring a, break. Or, or, or like a, like a John Stringer used to do a, a joke about that. He goes. He goes. What well, was it? Is this? Uh, is it, am I gonna have to report this on my taxes? Because I don't. I don't. I don't want to suck a dick for a million dollars if I'm <laughs> if I'm only really getting seven fifty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but even then. You can do a lot with 750. You can do a lot with 750. Because Javi be flipping tamales too, dog. <laughs> you know That's a lot of tamales. I can buy a lot of masas. That's a lot of pork, a lot of masa. pork shoulder. A lot of pork butt, mm -hmm. right? Pork shoulder. Yeah. Boston butt. All kinds of butt. 
<laughs> 750. That's Every. why he purposely didn't put a camera on himself today. <laughs> make it harder for the Discord. Use your AI to make yeah, it up, it bitches. Get the voice. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, it's probably going to have to be a two-parter. Huh? Yeah, fun stuff for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a two-parter, I believe. I don't know. Sure. Rob, uh, Rob's going to have to. Yeah, we yeah. Gotta have a clock and shit up here because I'll talk y'all's ear off. Nah, yeah, for sure. It'll be a two-parter. So what what days as I, as we let you go and uh, tell them your social media? But like, what days do you go to Urban Jungle? It just depends. Uh, it just depends. Like Tuesday, Thursday, probably. I'll try to go those nights, but um, I've been kind of busy with just having like shows around that time and stuff. So. I know. Um, I feel guilty every time they see me, and I know, like, I, I'm ready to tell them, like, my knee's been hurt. That's why yeah. you haven't seen me all week. Or... Yeah, yeah. I feel like I don't have an excuse though. Yeah. It's like you could have came in for a little bit, or you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, just Tuesday, Thursdays, really, and then I'll go Saturday for open mat, just oh, to go yeah. roll, get a little sweated. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait to get decent enough to where like I could do some shit because currently it's very, it's very elementary. Like maybe you could walk me through those uh, white belt. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's what you gotta do, bro. You just gotta be patient. You are gonna suck and you know, just hang in there. We believe in you, yeah, Chico. Yeah. You'll get your blue belt next yeah. year. Make me a little post and note I put on my mirror. Like, <laughs> you know. If you do two days, you get your blue belt next year. Two per day. Yeah, probably. You know how my schedule set up. Probably less, bro. Yeah. I, I mean, you've been, you been going for like a little while now, right? Um, I just signed up again at Urban Jungle at like in June, June of 22. But all, all like... Uh, That's when I really started taking it more serious. Yeah, but you've been doing jiu-jitsu like for... I mean, when did you first start it's doing it? It's just very sporadic. So uh, when I met you... That's when I first signed up the first time. At the old gym. Everybody passed me. Everybody I met, yeah, uh, at the old gym, at the old location. Everybody I met from those days, they're all fucking purple belts. and uh. They're all like way, way moved up. And Sebastian ranked seventh in his weight class That's and wild. shit. Yep. He was a little kid that was like, like, hey, I just finished helping. Hmm. I don't know. He might have been like 14 at the time. He's like, I just finished helping the kids class. And just, I was like, hey, 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 oh, slow down, bro. I smoke weed and all type of shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing too much. So uh, what projects, uh, uh, let them know, man, where they can find you on, on social media and what to look out for. Uh, on Instagram, I'm mostly just on Instagram. I post like shows and all that stuff. Uh, Danny Guerrero underscore. Um, yeah, I just post shows about there. I'll be at the Houston Improv uh, March 29th on a show with uh, Jeff Joe and Jesse Saldana. So, and Jesse Payton, uh, Keisha Hunt. Oh, lineup. everybody's on that yeah. show? Yeah, lineup's crazy. Is that the chicken and tacos? Um, yeah, it's a chicken and taco okay, show. show. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's probably the next big show I'll be who, on. Who has to follow Keisha Hunt? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I that's, don't know the lineup. That's a million dollar question. Yeah. So the question doesn't yeah. matter. It'll be you. There it is. <laughs> hey. You know what I'm saying? A true black belt just yeah. broke it down. <laughs> I, I, I just gave a white belt perspective. Danny Guerrero, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Thanks for coming, us. man. What did he say? That's, that's what happened, guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, though.